one of the most captivating and mysterious figures in Russian history has to be that of Grigory Rasputin. He has gone down in history as a divisive figure, but what can't be argued is his rise to prominence, from a peasant family to being a constant and important figure within the Russian royal family. He was a man who befriended the royal family and Tsar Nicholas II, the last emperor of Russia. However, like the Tsar, Rasputin would die in a horrific and crazy assassination that is remembered for as being equally bizarre as it was sinister. So join us today as we look at the crazy assassination of Rasputin, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Born in 1869 in a remote Siberian village, Rasputin lived the life of a typical Russian peasant. His childhood and early life remains much of a mystery, but his life would change in his 20s when he embarked on a 300 mile pilgrimage to a monastery. He would return a holy man, a healer and also a man of God. Some believe that he left the village to escape punishment for being involved in stealing a horse, but some other sources say how he had a religious vision of the Virgin Mary. Rasputin following this left his old life behind, being 28 and married for 10 years with a son and another on the way. Whilst at the monastery he spent several months there and was humbled by the elder and was taught to read and write. He then spent the following years as a wanderer or a pilgrim to visit different holy sites. Around the early 1900s he built up a number of followers who prayed with him and he became a popular figure because of his activities and charisma. From around 1905 his reputation for being a holy man who could help people was being developed and he was making a good impression on many people including influential bishops and priests. One of these was named Theophan who was so impressed with Rasputin that he invited him to his home and Theophan became Rasputin's most high profile and influential friend yet. This helped him to gain access to many of the different gatherings where religious discussion and philosophy would occur. Inside these meetings he became even more popular. So his reputation was growing at the time and he formed some solid friendships with influential members of the aristocracy and through these friends he first met the Tsar on the 1st of November 1905. Tsar Nicholas would write that he and Alexandra had made the acquaintance of a man, God Grigory, and he then began to become close with the Russian royal family. The royal family became obsessed with the belief that Rasputin could possess miraculous powers and he could have been introduced to the Tsar and Tsarina as a man who could help their son. The Tsar's son Alexei had suffered from haemophilia throughout his life and he would regularly bleed heavily to the point where it became incredibly dangerous. Rasputin through this became an integral member of the royal entourage. He first was summoned to pray for Alexei in spring 1907 and the next day the boy recovered and he developed a reputation of being capable of healing. Five years later in 1912 Alexei would become severely ill again with a haemorrhage in his thigh and groin which caused a haematoma. It looked like he would die but Rasputin yet again was summoned and he wrote to the Tsarina Alexandra that God has seen your tears and heard your prayers. Do not grieve, the little one will not die. Do not allow the doctors to bother him too much. Within a few days Alexei's bleeding had stopped and this was one of the strangest parts of Rasputin's story. It's believed that by telling the doctors to leave the boy alone, this helped to calm the Tsarina and reduce the stress on Alexei, but others claim that Rasputin did perform a miracle. Having proved to the royal family his healing powers, Rasputin soon became the confidant and a personal and close friend of Alexandra the Tsarina, and for many nobles and aristocrats, the idea of having a peasant monk advising the queen was a huge wrong, and Rasputin was deemed dangerous, as he had a huge amount of power. To some he was a miracle working faith healer, but to others he was a sex crazed drunk who engaged in huge acts of debauchery. He certainly lived the life by having liaisons with many women from high class society, and there were even rumours that Rasputin and the Tsarina were lovers. From this there was a growing call in Russia by some to get rid of Rasputin, and rumours in the press would also slate Rasputin, accusing him of behaving inappropriately, and he was accused of being a religious heretic. In 1917 an assassination attempt on Rasputin did occur, after a 33 year old peasant woman tried to kill him by stabbing him in the stomach outside his home. He was seriously injured and it was touch and go, but Rasputin would recover. 
people would try to convince the Russian royal family that they were in danger from Rasputin and his political manipulations and that he would destroy the monarchy. But the Russian royal family must have thought that Rasputin was the second coming of Christ, but to many he was in fact the Antichrist who was driving Russia and the Tsars to disgrace. In 1917 a group of nobles would decide that enough was enough and they decided to put an end to Rasputin and his threat to the empire and his influence over the Tsar and Tsarina. They were led by Prince Felix Yusupov who married the Tsar's niece, Grand Duke Dmitry Pavlovich the Tsar's cousin and a right wing politician Vladimir Purishkevich, an outspoken member of the Duma. The plan was to lure Rasputin to Yusupov's Moika palace. Yusupov was sent to befriend Rasputin and attract him to the palace. It was decided that the murder would take place on the 16th of December in the evening and in the early hours of the 17th of December. The conspirators wanted to use the night to hide the murder and dispose of his body. It was noted that after midnight Rasputin's apartment was not guarded and Yusupov would pick him up at his apartment at half past midnight. Yusupov would use his wife as bait to lure Rasputin into a possible liaison with her, but his wife Irina would refuse to take part so they had to appear like she was at the palace. Rasputin and Yusupov would then enter the palace at the side entrance, leading to the basement so no one could see them enter or leave the palace. It was decided to use poison, also due to the close proximity of a police station nearby. It was planned to offer Rasputin cyanide lace pastries and wine, and then after this his body would be thrown into a river, with his body being weighed down and wrapped in a rug. About a month before the murder, Yusupov had spoken to a friend of Rasputin's, complaining of chest pains, and she suggested that he should see Rasputin for his healing powers, and from this Rasputin and Yusupov began to meet up a number of times. Yusupov would mention his wife during a meeting, and it was arranged that Rasputin would meet her after midnight on December the 17th as planned in the plot. Rasputin at the time had begun to become groanly paranoid that people were about to kill or assassinate him. Around midnight on the planned day, Rasputin changed into a light blue embroidered shirt and he had told many people where he was going. At around midnight the conspirators met at the palace in the basement dining room with pastries and wine on the table. These had been prepared and then a conspirator crushed the potassium cyanide crystals into the pastries and wine. Some of the pastries were left unpoisoned to not arouse suspicion and at 12.30 Rasputin was picked up to go to the palace. Following the planned protocol, he and Yusupov entered via a side entrance and headed to the basement dining room. Rasputin could hear music upstairs and it was explained that Irina his wife would be down later and the other conspirators waited for something to happen. However things did not go to plan. Rasputin who was offered the poison pastries refused initially saying they were too sweet, turning down a midnight snack and he also refused to drink anything as well. It seemed like the plan had failed and the whole plot was a bust but with this Yusupov began to enter a panic and went upstairs to speak with the other conspirators. But when he returned Rasputin had started tucking into the pastries and began to drink the wine. The potassium cyanide should have taken immediate effect but nothing happened and Yusupov continued to speak to Rasputin until something did occur. He even played the guitar for his guest but nothing happened. It was said that Rasputin had consumed enough poison to fell an elephant but the mystic would not die or succumb. It was around 2.30am and Yusupov then went for another chat with the conspirators and the poison wasn't working. Yusupov then took a gun from Pavlovich and went back to Rasputin who did not notice he entered the room with a gun behind his back. Whilst Rasputin was gazing into a cabinet, Yusupov told him to look at the crucifix and say a prayer and then he raised the pistol to Rasputin and fired a bullet into his chest. The conspirators hearing the gunshot rushed into the room and saw Rasputin on the ground and after a few minutes he convulsed and then fell still. It was with this that the conspirators thought they had killed the great mystic, however after an hour Yusupov went back to inspect the body which was still warm. He then shook the body and when he turned away he noticed that Rasputin's left eye was starting to open and that he was still alive. It's said that Rasputin then jumped to his feet and rushed Yusupov grabbing his shoulders and his neck and after he got free Yusupov ran upstairs shouting he's still alive. Purishkevich then ran downstairs and saw Rasputin running across the courtyard. 
It was said that Rasputin's face was literally gone, his handsome eyes had come out of their sockets in a semi-conscious state, and that he had a crazed look. Purishkevich then gave chase and fired his gun at Rasputin whilst he ran off, but he kept missing. He fired two shots before firing a third that hit Rasputin in the back, and with this he stopped and Purishkevich fired again, with the shot hitting its target in the head. As he fell, the head began to jerk, and he crawled still somehow alive, and he was now kicked in the head by Purishkevich. Rasputin was then taken back to the palace, where Yusupov battered him in the head with a two-pound dumbbell to ensure that he was dead. They then wrapped up his body and prepared it for burial. Despite this, Rasputin was allegedly still alive, and the conspirators bound his arms and legs with rope before wrapping his body in a cloth. The job was now to dispose of the body, and they threw the corpse into a car and headed off to their location before the sun rose, and they threw Rasputin's body over the side of a bridge. They forgot to weigh him down with weights, and threw him into the nearby Malayanevka River. It was said that Rasputin was still seen at this point, despite being poisoned, shot and beaten with a dumbbell, thrashing around in the river. Two days later his body would be found under the ice-covered river, and when the authorities found the body, it was found with both hands raised, which led to the thought that he was still alive under the water, and had attempted to untie the rope around his hands. An autopsy confirmed that inside Rasputin's body was alcohol, but no poison, that he sustained three bullet wounds, and water was found inside his lungs. Rasputin's funeral was attended by the imperial family, and a number of close friends, but his wife, mistress and children were not invited. His death saw many in Russia congratulate his murderers, however it did little to turn the tide of criticism against the Tsar and the Tsarina. Rasputin's relationship with the royals had caused irreversible damage to the monarchy, and within three months the Tsar was forced to abdicate, and around a year later the Romanov family were murdered too in brutal fashion. Rasputin's death is a story which seemingly comes straight out of a horror film, featuring a man who was like the living dead. Although we can criticise some parts of the account, as they came directly from Yusupov, the mystery behind the peasant man and healer has captivated many for decades. He certainly was a man who rose to immense heights under bizarre circumstances, and his death is an incredible story which is worthy of any Hollywood blockbuster. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.